So they say the shortest distance between two points is a straight line, and that may be the case, but a straight line and a fast line in terms of workflow may not always be the best line. As the first slide I've got here illustrates, on the left we can see we've got some typical content creation tools, whether they be some tools from Adobe like Photoshop or After Effects or a 3D application like Cinema 4D or any combinations of those things that you use to create motion graphics, you can bring those things directly into Final Cut Pro. Whether you do that with or with an alpha or transparency channel will control how you can see those elements superimposed over backgrounds inside of Final Cut Pro. And while this is the direct route to getting things into Final Cut Pro, it may not necessarily be the, the best route. And let's actually take a look at Final Cut Pro so that we can see some of the benefits of working with templates versus um, just raw alpha channel graphics. So in Final Cut Pro, you can see I've got a couple of different elements here, just medium shots. And on the timeline, in this first section, I've got the multi-layer stack. The first layer is just your typical video background, followed by three elements, the first being a Photoshop document, the second being a couple of text elements generated directly inside of Final Cut Pro. Now, in terms of look, if you look up here inside of the canvas, you can see they got a fairly sophisticated look, and it was very easy to do. Final Cut Pro does allow you to do those things very, very easily. However, in terms of editorial, um, it can make things a little bit cumbersome in the long run. For example, while it is easy to version things inside of Final Cut Pro, I can easily take this, slack, uh, this stack of elements, select it, and move it down the timeline to create an alternate version. If I want to start customizing this, now I've got to jump into each individual element, go to its controls, and modify it to create, um, to create each version for each uh, super that we have here on the timeline. The problem with this is that if I start moving things around in the timeline, as a diligent Final Cut Pro editor, if I use my Ripple tools, for example, it's very easy for me to keep things in sync. But a lot of times, you tend to make space by, for example, using just your arrow tool and moving things around. Now, if you're good, you'll always get it right. But, you know, not everybody's good all the time. Sometimes you get tired and you miss things. And you might find out later on, after you've got your edit most of the way completed, that all of a sudden, supers are popping up in the wrong place and they're associated with the wrong people. This can be problematic. So having some way to contain these multi-layer effects so that perhaps they only take up two layers as opposed to the four that we have here might make things a little bit easier from a editing standpoint. Now Final Cut does have a facility for this. You can simply take layers, go to your sequence, and nest and collapse layers into a container like I'm doing here. And that works well too in terms of versioning. Now I've only got one stack of elements in order to, uh, to deal with. However, um, now, every time I want to go modify one of these, I have to actually step into the container before I can make the modification. So from an editing standpoint, being able to see things in context, you see I've lost my context here, not always necessarily the best way um, to approach this. So another way to approach this is by using motion templates. Now to show you an example or a comparison I have here, if I go to my sequence menu, actually let's set some markers up here in the timeline. And remember that I'm going to superimpose this over my first video track, so let's check my tabs here. I'm going to go to what's called the Sequence Menu and the Add Master Template. This is going to open up what's called the Master Templates browser built into Final Cut Pro. Let's go ahead and superimpose this on the timeline so that you can see it, and the benefit becomes clear already. Firstly and foremostly is the eye candy factor. If I look at the timeline, you can see that based on using the tools in Photoshop, for example, and also in Motion, I've stepped up the design. I've got my nice curved banner, but I also have now text that isn't on a flat baseline, a text that's actually along a curve, and I've got a couple of different fonts, and they're set, but it's all contained within this one element. To be able to customize this, I can very simply double-click on the element, just like anything else in Final Cut Pro, and load the, uh, load the controls into the viewer. Here I can see that based on what I set up in motion, I've got a couple of panels here that automatically tell me, hey, this is the information that you need to fill in. So now I've simplified workflow because I don't really need to think or worry about um, which text element is for the super, which ex uh, text element is for the title. I can very easily go in here and say that this is a support specialist, let's say, for example, and we're going to change the name to Allison Chen. And let's drop that down like that. So now we can see that it's going to follow the curve based on the design regardless of uh, however long the text happens to be. So let's actually jump over to motion and I can show you how easy it is to take even a static element like that Photoshop ribbon and convert it into a template.